been living under a rock named cis privilege. You know that so-called bathroom bills prohibiting trans people from using bathrooms according to their gender have been popping up across the country. Because when ignorant people hear the word trans woman, they don't think this, they think this. Very important part of my teenage sexual awakening. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the trans people who have assaulted someone in a bathroom. Oh, right. There aren't any. Not that Republican fans of small government have ever needed something to actually exist in order to legislate against it. Even the guy who loves the Constitution more than he loves the soup that eats like a meal is happy to overlook the unconstitutionality of these laws. The state has the power to pass their own laws to make it make a determination uh, that, that men should not be going to the bathroom with little girls. As the father of daughters, I'm, I'm not terribly excited about men being able to go alone into a bathroom with, with my daughters. Give your daughters some credit. They seem perfectly capable of fending off unwanted physical contact from creepy men. Go for the eyes, honey! jumping on the bathroom freakout bandwagon is Tennessee, which took time out from the important business of designating an official state rifle and debating the merits of pet skunks to protect their women folk from a non-existent threat. Just one problem, one of the bill's key sponsors is more of an existing threat. Jeremy Durham has effectively been booted out of Capitol Hill to a new office area. Allegations Durham made sexual comments and inappropriate physical contact with women who work at the state capitol. Durham sent post-midnight text messages asking two women working at the legislature to send him pictures. I don't remember sending them. I mean, they, I've asked them to show them to me multiple times and they won't. Yeah, you know, Jeremy, I think asking someone to show them to you is what got you in trouble in the first place. Tennessee's self-appointed ladies' room bouncer has been deemed such a risk to women that he needs a whole separate building to protect female colleagues from him. But he's still a champion of protecting children from sexual predators, right? Former youth pastor Joseph Todd Neal admitted having dozens of images of violent and sadistic child porn. He also pleaded guilty to the statutory rape of a member of his youth group. He faced up to 20 years in prison before House Majority Whip Jeremy Durham wrote to Judge Sandy Matisse in Chattanooga. Neal was ultimately sentenced to around three years in prison. Durham won't say how he knew Neal or why he wrote the letter. Because sexual predators stick together. You know what they say, bros before little people who can't stick up for themselves? At least the Tennessee legislature is doing something about the sexual harasser in their midst. Sparked by the investigation into Jeremy Durham, right now state lawmakers are considering a controversial bill that would require sexual harassment victims pay the defendant's attorney fees if they file a lawsuit and lose. Of course they are. By the way, that bill passed. Sorry, Tennessee women. I guess if you don't want to get felt up by a lawmaker then slapped with a bill from his lawyer, don't visit the state capitol. At least not without the protection of your rifle and your pet skunk. We'll be right back.